This tutorial is brought to you by one of the authors of Revising Professional Writing, now in its third edition. My students call me Dr. Kim. The publishers made this video available under a Creative Commons license. For more information, contact parlaypress.com. Remember, you can use the pause button at any time, and if you see shadows or something weird on the screen, try changing your playback quality settings. Well, the view you see here includes everything you might learn about professional writing in my tutorials. There are others that help you understand content development, organization, style, and mechanics, as well as the rhetorical context that determines which content, organization, or style is going to be effective in a specific situation. I know your primary interest in this tutorial is the message itself but effective organization can only be judged by taking into account the rhetorical context. If you haven't listened to the tutorials on audience and purpose yet, you should. This tutorial focuses on one area of organization in professional writing, paragraph unity. I'm sure you've heard about this topic before, but it isn't likely you've thought much about its impact in your own workplace writing. So that's my goal here. We'll consider the organization of a memo which was written by a partner in a high-tech firm to describe health insurance plan options for the company's employees. The quality in the video makes it impossible for you to read on the screen. If you're a student using our book, your instructor can get you a copy, or you can always download one at proswrite.com. The audience for this memo is the other partner in the company. Although she has plenty of expertise in other areas, she isn't an expert on health insurance. She might be slightly skeptical of or sensitive to the writer's message about plans. After all, she probably has her own ideas about what kind of plan is best, and this is going to cost their business money. All of this means the writer has to develop both informative and persuasive content to increase the reader's readiness to accept his message. In this tutorial, I'll explain the two unifying principles for creating successful organization in paragraphs. Along the way, I'll convince you that organizing successfully matters in this memo. The first principle you need to understand to create unified paragraphs is the controlling idea. Consider this paragraph from the memo about options for health insurance plans. What's the controlling idea here? You probably struggled to identify it. That's because the writer did not actually state it. Usually this happens because it's clear to the writer what the point is, and he or she is not thinking of how differently their reader will approach the same information. To increase the reader's readiness to accept his message, the writer should provide an explicit controlling idea, like the one shown here in A. I've discussed something similar in the chapters on bottom line placement and persuasive prose development. Note that including the explicit controlling idea makes the message more effective. It does that by clarifying that the writer's purpose in this paragraph is to inform the business partner. The same content in the paragraph with the second controlling idea, shown in B, suggests the writer's purpose is to direct rather than simply inform. And that would probably be inappropriate in this situation. The point here, though, is that the writer can only be sure the reader gets the intended point in each paragraph by making the controlling ideas explicit. In this revised version of the paragraph we've been considering, the writer has improved its effectiveness by providing an explicit controlling idea. However, the writer has not gone far enough because the reader has to get all the way to the end of the paragraph to learn the writer's intended point. To create an efficient message, the writer needs to place that controlling idea before the details that support it. That means the writer needs to move the sentence with the controlling idea to the beginning of the paragraph. The second principle you need to understand to create unified paragraphs involves grouping details. Consider the memo to the business partner about health insurance options again, this time with the sentences numbered. Think about how the writer could further increase the unity of this passage. Sentence 1 provides the controlling idea, benefits and drawbacks to two plans. Take a minute to inspect the other four sentences to determine whether they all belong in a group of sentences controlled by one. 
you should have recognized that because sentences two through five do fall within the controlling idea. In other words, they're all about pros and cons of the two plans. They do all belong in a single paragraph. In addition, the fact that sentences one through five create a paragraph of manageable size means there's no need to split them into multiple paragraphs. In general, shorter paragraphs or chunks of information help readers get through information more easily. But it's important for you to note that the arrangement of the four sentences within the paragraph is not ideal if the writer's goal is to be both effective and efficient. How are the four sentences grouped in this version of the paragraph? Well, sentence two is about the AHS plan and pros. Sentence three is about the CH plan and cons. Four is about AHS again, but cons this time. Five is about CH and pros this time. To make this paragraph more unified, the writer should group the sentences more logically. That means organizing either by the plan, AH or CH, or by analysis, pros or cons. The ideal would be to combine these two groupings so that the details in this paragraph would appear like so. Two, pro for AHS, followed by four, con for AHS, then sentence five, pro for CH, and finally three, con for CH. It's time to check your understanding of paragraph unity by revising a passage you haven't seen before. It comes from an executive summary in a strategy report. The specific question asks that you develop a topic sentence to unify the details in the passage. Okay, you might decide that the controlling idea is something like the one shown here in A. Marks and Spencer faces four threats. Because there's no single correct answer, the controlling idea shown in B is also possible. Both A and B are accurate based on the details listed in the passage. However, each makes a slightly different point. Our inability to determine which is best is precisely why it's critical that writers provide an explicit controlling idea. If not, they allow readers like us to determine what it is for ourselves. The two principles for crafting unified paragraphs have been explained by referring to a memo sent by one business partner to another because the two of them want to offer health insurance to their employees. The writer took on the task of investigating plans and needs to document what was learned for the reader so the two of them can make a decision. The final version of the paragraph has an explicit controlling idea at the beginning and supporting details that are arranged logically with pros of both plans followed by cons of both plans. Revising to make the controlling idea explicit was critical in creating an effective message because without it the reader might have interpreted the controlling idea differently than the writer intended. I have more to say about organizing individual sentences in the tutorial on cohesion. At this point you may be thinking that paragraph unity doesn't seem so terribly important. After all, the reader can get the meaning without placing the controlling idea first or grouping the sentences into this tight logical pattern. My experience has taught me that there's a difference between what workplace readers can do and what they will do. With unified paragraphs, readers are more likely to get the meaning intended by the writer and they get it more quickly. I can think of few business situations in which that would be a mistake. Before this tutorial ends, let me say that there's no way to learn to write your own workplace documents effectively and efficiently without actually applying the ideas in this tutorial and others as you read and analyze new texts. Remember, reading thoughtfully precedes writing successfully.